Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and lead instructor for CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record every Mondays at 4.45 p.m. Pacific time. If you enjoy the channel, please hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel. Turn notifications on and you will get an email link with this full episode. And if you want to submit to this show, take a look at the information in the description. Hey, what's up, Bart? How's it going? Good. All right. So this hand comes from a private 5-5 five five game. Um, so uh, Private 5-5 five five game? Uh, you going on the private uh, side? You're not playing at parks anymore? <laughs> this was just a one-time uh, thing. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> went, went, went to check it out because, you know, private games are usually very juicy. So I just, just wanted yeah. to see what's going on. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know anybody there you know, my first time, and this is pretty early in the session. All I know is that usually it's, you know, a bunch of, like, very, very poor players. Uh, I've seen a couple of uh, hands, uh, you know, some regular, you know, crazy shit, but uh, it's about 650 effective. Okay. And uh, the game the game is uh, ten-handed, but I guess it doesn't really matter much for this one. But so hero under the gun uh, with pocket nines opens to 30. Uh, and I, I bumped up the open because nobody was holding pre flop anything. So, you know, uh, kind of a large for, for a five blind game, but I think it's just fine. Uh, so, uh, everybody falls to the small blind. Mm -hmm. And you're only 650 okay. effective, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, villain is the effective stack. Right. 650 effective. Okay. Um, okay. So it goes heads up to the flop and yep. the flop comes out 10, nine, six rainbow. All right, so you've got middle set here. I got small bl set. small blinds flatted. I mean, you're pretty shallow to even think about. I don't know what's going to happen, but <laughs> you're first of all, you're in a private game. You're playing 650 effective at 55 and you just flop middle set. And right. the guy in the small blind just let me ask you this question before you even tell me what happens. What okay. hands are you flat calling a 6x raise in the small blind against a UTG? Just preflop. Okay. I mean, well, me or, or the guy who was playing? No, Cause you. I, I, you. Because the, the, point, the, the point that I'm trying to make is is that, like, just that factor, preflop, means that this guy is probably doesn't know what he's doing. Because I can't even – I don't even know what hands I'm flatting in the small blind against UTG. I mean, right. I guess it's a very, very small portion. But anyways, okay, yeah. so it's 10-9-6 yeah. rainbow. No, yeah. I, I agree with you. It's yeah, crazy. yeah. I've seen – like, yeah, so, so – Right, so uh, uh, I, I I'll just say one thing. I've noticed a few hands this guy played before that I kind of tagged them as a showdown monkey. I'm, I'm not going to go into it, okay. but he kind of like did a lot of crazy shit pre-flop trying to get to the showdown. So so ten nine six rainbow, he checks, okay, and mm -hmm. I bet 40. Uh, you know, I'm trying to bet as much as possible here without, you know, right. uh, being too crazy, and he – insta calls me i mean and i mean like insta calls me right so i'm i'm obviously ecstatic about that the turn is a king an offsuit king okay uh i think it was a total rainbow board so he checks to me and uh you know obviously so, so first thing i wanted to ask you i'm assuming you, you like a bet here obviously right well i mean here's the thing so I think with nines, it's probably a lot closer than with pocket tens. Uh, if you had pocket tens here, I actually mm -hmm. like a check a lot more because I think that you start to get into a situation almost like it's way ahead, way behind. Now, maybe you could say, hey, Bart, you're overthinking it. No, these guys are V-pipping 60 70%. But even just from a fundamental, if they're playing close to the types of ranges that they're supposed to be playing, if you flopped a set of tens on 10, 9, 6 against the small blind and the small blind check called and the turn is a king, you have all the tens in your hand and the logical right. types of draw that comes in there is like a queen jack or if they're slow playing like a seven, eight. So mm -hmm. they're going to have a much weaker one pair range because you block all the top pairs with a set of tens, right? And they're just going to fold out on a king. Um, here with nines, there's more tens that you can call with. I think that I do like a bet, but it's probably it can't be like a, a polar bet. Like like it's okay. if the pot's one forty, I think you probably bet like fifty to seventy five, something like that. Okay. 
All right, sounds perfect. So uh, pretty much in line with your thinking, I, I ended up betting 75. So so obviously, you know, with the Insta call, like the prim, primary hand I'm putting them on is a 10, like 10 anything, uh-huh. right? And and like you said, I'm I'm obviously keenly aware of Queen Jack, but but mostly I'm thinking that the king is a scare card because I'm the under the gun pre flop raiser. You know, I got his king, whatever. So I just want him to call with a ten, so I don't want to bomb it. Right, right. Right. So I bet exactly seventy five. Okay. That's exactly what I bet. So I bet seventy five. Now here's like a little bit of a live situation. So whatever, just want to tell you see how you interpret this. So as I'm betting, you know, as I'm putting out my bet, he basically beats me into the pot and I'm, I'm placing my chips in so he can't see exactly how I'm kind of holding it sort of in my fist, you know, in my hand, he can't see. So he sees that I'm betting and he basically calls, like he puts his stack in and then he looks at me how much it is and counts out how much to call it. So basically he was calling and then seeing how much is he calling. Okay. Okay. Right. So it was an Insta call and he didn't even know exactly how much he's calling. And he had Insta right? call, and he had, he had Insta call the, um, the, fl- the flop. Right, the right. Flop right. was just a regular, like like a normal insta call. Like uh-huh. I call the turn. I didn't even finish placing my bet, counting out my bet. He already pre-called with a, with a stack, and then right. kind of counted out how much that is and took the rest back. I mean, that tends okay, to so that tends to me to think that he's not. Remember, you know how I'm a big proponent of. Um, I think one of the largest um, live tells that somebody can have and. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to this in the podcast this particular week that comes out tomorrow, but I actually played a couple of uh, – I played the Planet Hollywood circuit event, and there was a hand that went down even against a professional player where the, the pacing was off. So pacing is very important in the way that people bet and the way that people call because if people have very, very fast pacing, normally in a situation where they're going to call, it's sort of a non-thinking call, meaning that – I would be very, very surprised if someone has the nuts with a very fast pacing and calling because there's always going to be a hitch. There's going to be a thought. And it's also the same thing, too, when someone's betting and the and the nuts have changed, right? Mm-hmm. Even if they ran into the nuts, even if they were betting a flush draw and they ran into the nut flush, there's always going to be a hitch at the end when checked to because they're going to be thinking about it. So when someone disregards what's happened on the board in their betting or in their calling, I tend to exclude the nuts, right? Because uh, there, there would be some thoughts. So I'd be very surprised if he has a nut type of hand here. If he's doing that, maybe he just doesn't believe you and he has a 10, you know? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, like I said, I wasn't sure how to interpret that, but that was just like really, I obviously took notice and it was very kind of weird to me. I was thinking like, what, what the hell is that supposed to mean? But uh-huh. anyway, so so he calls uh, and I would go to the river. So the pot is 290. By the way, it could the be river, a hand uh, like King Queen or King Jack too, as someone points out too. Yeah, all right, go to the river. Yep. Right. Uh, river's an offsuit ace. Offsuit ace or eight? Ace. 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 Okay. Ace. So the final board is uh, ten nine six King Ace. Right. King yep. Right, and he checks. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I'm assuming you know. You like a bet for value here. Well, nothing's really changed unless he had already right. flopped seven right. eight or queen jack. The the issue here right. now is is that here's the thing, like it's unfortunate because these are really, really great exploitable bluff runouts where you can be very, very heavy with bluffing and very, very unbalanced with your sizing. From a fundamental point of view, which is this is very sort of newer school sort of no limit thinking. You're actually allowed to bet a large sizing here because if somebody knows what's going on, they have to defend more. But in reality, when people are just playing their own hand strengths, they're just going to fold out a lot of hands that aren't going to be like, you know, two pair plus, right, on this run out. Because it looks like, you know, you how you, how you going to get a call? I got to call you with like queen 10, jack 10. So... Yeah. I think you have to just size down and target a king and, right. and, and sometimes hope that he's got, like, ace-10. I would probably bet, like, 75 to 100 again. Okay. Well, you know? it's like you said, he called a 6-X six, six race from small blind, so he yeah. definitely has no idea what's going on. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, okay. So I ended up I ended up betting, and basically what I was thinking, like, a couple of things. So I ended up betting 125. Okay. Uh, which is, you know, it's not – too large i mean it's less than half pot uh i was just thinking that again like it, it you know 
ace and the king, like, hit me, ace, king, ace is king, is everything. Like, I'm, I'm under the gun razor, not that he's thinking about it, but ace is scary. So, like, I'm, I'm hoping he's got something can call me with, right? And also, again, I'm, I'm still kind of keenly aware of Queen Jack, right, which is the, right. the most natural draw. So, anyway, so I bet 125, and he quickly check raises into 375, and he's got, like, maybe 100 left behind. Wow. So, by the way, I don't know the result of this hand, and I remember – because uh, I don't think you gave it to me, and I remember looking at this, nope. and I put a mental note about something here that I'm going to say here in a second. So, you 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 bet 125, and uh, small blind raises to what 375, 375. Yes, exactly. with 100 yeah, left. A hundred left, exactly. So like here's a the, yeah. here here's the thing. So obviously, you get in these situations where, in order for you to shove all in for value, you have to be good here more than 50 percent of the time. The pot odds mm -hmm. shift, right? We're, he's not going to fold, right? So just forget no, about that. No, forget about that. No. So in order for you to shove, you're going to have to be good here over 100%, over 50% of the time, right? But if you call, so when you bet 125, that means the pot is like 415 and it's going to be like 800, like 250 for you to call. So you're getting three and a half to one, which means that you only have to be good to call one out of four and a half times versus if you shove, you got to be good one out of two times. I think shoving is a little bit out there, but here's what I was thinking about when I read this hand is that in all the, in the other stuff that you're saying is, is that kind of makes me think he doesn't have like seven, eight or queen jack, but there is one hand that's jumping out at me here that you beat. What about ace king? Uh, okay, and so I, and uh, say, uh, I mean, that's just my about... feeling is that I think okay. he might show up with ace king here is a flat in the okay. small blind calls the flop because he didn't three bet pre you raise large right. called the turn and now he thinks he's got the nuts but here's the thing gene i'm not gonna fold especially with all those live tells that you told me but i don't think your hand's strong enough to shove is fundamentally what i'm saying here even if he's gonna call 100 percent of the time okay so what one thing i didn't tell you as far as the ace king like this guy i've seen like i said i've seen very little it was early on but he was like a total maniac pre-flop okay so i i think ace king he would have three bet for sure Wow. Uh, so that's just the only thing. He was like a total maniac pre-flop, and then after the flop, he would just like almost check it down. You know, one hand, three, three bad pocket kings, and but here's the thing. So, times. so some of the people in the chat yeah. are saying, why? Do, why can't he have two pair? Because I, I don't. Players aren't going to normally check raise the river with two pair on this run out when the pre-flop raiser can have ace king. They're not going to check raise the right. river with ace ten, king ten. It's usually right. going to be just a call. Anyways, what did you end up doing? Uh, so I, I ended up folding. Uh, oh, you folded. Wow. Okay. I folded. Oh. I mean, I looked at it and it's like, he's got all 16 combos of queen jack and seven, eight. Yeah. You know, all of them, hundred percent. He's got all, I don't know if he would play him this way. Like I said, it was too early on. I've seen him like get this be a showdown monkey. So, and like, I was just thinking, what does he, what does he have? Like, like, what does he you know, bluffing with, or, or like, it just didn't make any sense. Yeah, but, but if you don't, if you think the guy, I mean, here's the thing for this too, and it's the same thing that I tell everybody, if you think this guy is all over the place, I can't fold the set here, especially after the, the live tells that you told me getting, getting, uh, what would we say, three and a half to one? I can't fold the set here, getting three right. and a half to one. If he's got queen jack, if he's got queen jack or seven, eight, so be it. I'm just not folding. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I, I'm just not going to fold there or get in that price. Like I said, I'm not going to yeah. shove. Did you ever find out what he had? Oh, yeah, he showed me. Uh, what was he it? He showed me. Ace six. Ace six for ace is up. Yeah. Oh, Gene, you're killing me. God. No, I mean, uh. yeah. <laughs> he showed, and, and here's the crazy part. He showed me like I rivered you, okay? Like this, <laughs> he, he wasn't bluffing. Gene, okay? yeah, he, the guy's all over the place, remember? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Gene, thanks for the call as uh, always. I appreciate it. Hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA200, click on the link right there.